Hi guys, uh, welcome back. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about our next activity that we're going to work on. Um, this is using a couple of new techniques, so things that um, we have not done before, so you might you might struggle a little bit at the beginning. Um, I want to give you a reminder that you can always go back, uh, pause your video, rewatch something again. Um, so at, like we always have from the beginning, I strongly recommend that you watch the video first, just watch it. Um, and then the second time, watch it again as you are trying to make the thing. So that if you get stuck, you can go one step at a time. Uh, the biggest advantage of remote learning by far is that you can learn at your own pace. So if you get stuck, pause your video, rewind it, go back and look at the previous segment um, until you get it correct. If you make a mistake or if you get lost, always remember uh, whatever you're working on, you can always go file and save as PSD. Okay, always click on save as PSD like it shows here. Uh, before you switch tabs, before you, certainly before you close tabs, before you do anything else in your browser, uh, always, always just do save as, save as PSD specifically. Um, so that if you, if you do that religiously, you'll make sure that you never lose what you've already done. Um, remember if you get stuck, send me an email. Uh, let me know if you have questions or concerns. So um, here is what we're doing this time. Um, on our uh, class page, um, if you look at the new assignment, um, it says using layer masks to create photo montage. So photo montage simply is combining multiple photos together to make a single image out of multiple photographs. Okay, very simple. Um, so go to our class, click on uh, classwork and then using assignments or excuse me using layer masks to create photo montage uh, click on the link there and it will bring you to a Google Drive folder that has this picture of Mount Rushmore okay so we need to get this picture of Mount Rushmore into Photopia okay here's my Photopia here's my Mount Rushmore um, in this class you should never ever ever be using screenshots okay i'm getting a lot of people who are sending me pictures that are screenshots you're turning in screenshots or you're getting stuff into photopia by making screenshots there is no reason ever to use a screenshot in this class the only exception is if you're making specifically a shot of your screen so that i can see what you see uh, like if you have a question and you're like I don't understand what's happening with my layers here you can send me a screenshot of that but you do not use screenshots to turn something in you do not use screenshots to open something or to save something do not save by making a screenshot okay that's a really bad idea uh, the only way you save in Photopia or Photoshop is file save as PSD okay don't do screenshots, okay? Ever, ever, ever. Um, a lot of people, I think, are used to just using phones and tablets. And on a phone, a screenshot is a good way to save something, um, you know, an, an image from a website or uh, from social media or something like that. Um, but it is not a good way to share pictures or to, uh, to save something that you wanna keep. Okay, so this is my picture that I wanna save. The proper way to save this is to click on it with two fingers and then click download, okay? Um, you don't want to open it and then make a screenshot of this picture that pops up, okay? The reason why is because a screenshot is almost always gonna be way lower quality than the actual image is. When you make a screenshot, it's essentially making a new picture out of just what's on your screen. And in this case, this original file is much higher quality than a screenshot will ever capture. So don't use a screenshot, okay? So again, click with two fingers, uh, or if you're using a mouse, you might wanna use a mouse, by the way. Um, if you have a mouse at home, a USB mouse, you can connect it to your Chromebook uh, and you can use it. Um, I should also add, you don't have to use your Chromebook to do these assignments. If you want to use like a regular desktop or a laptop of some sort, um, you absolutely can. 
Uh, Chromebook is okay and it will work, but um, the Chromebooks are kind of underpowered for what we're asking them to do. Uh, if you have a nice desktop or laptop computer and you want to use that for Photopia, you'll probably find it works a lot better. Um, so up to you if you want to try that or not. But I do recommend you might want to try a mouse. It's not required, but it does help, I find. So uh, right click with your mouse or click with two fingers and then click download. Okay. Uh, then open up Photopia and you're going to go file, open and find the file that you downloaded, okay? Most likely it will be in your folder that says downloads. In my case, there's mine, okay? Um, what are we doing with this Mount Rushmore picture? Here is the idea. We are going to be taking Mount Rushmore and using a technique called layer masks, we are adding four new heads to Mount Rushmore, okay? Um, these obviously, uh, I went on Google and I just typed in like, hottest male models 2020 and this is what popped up um actually no that was from 2019. uh for 2020 i made a new one um every year i like to make a new mount rushmore this one was 2019 uh, but it gives you kind of an idea of what we're going to be making um let's close it we don't need to see that anymore uh here is the one that i made for 2020. so my 2020 uh mount rushmore has um dr fauci and Notorious, RBG, and Joe Exotic, and Sad MJ, okay? Um, you'll notice my four heads here, um, all of them are chosen specifically because they kind of fit along with the original heads from Mount Rushmore. So I replaced Lincoln here with MJ, right? And he's looking kind of in the same direction. It's not identical, but uh, close enough that I can swap that head in there and it looks pretty good. Uh, you'll notice that I also kind of cut around uh, the shape of the face where I wanted uh, the rocks to be. So the rocks were kind of there already. Um, and so I'm kind of using the natural features of the rock to uh, keep it on there or to, to make it appear that the head is integrated into the rock. Um, my other heads are uh, RBG, uh, again, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, um, and she, uh, her head is sort of, not again, not perfectly, but roughly matches the same direction of uh, Thomas Jefferson. Um, and then I have Tiger King, uh, Joe Exotic, good match for Teddy Roosevelt, and lastly, uh, Dr. Fauci, um, in the place of uh, George Washington. Uh, once I have all my effects applied, you'll see that uh, they look fairly realistic. They look like they're actually made of rock. They actually like look like they could sort of be, um, you know, actually made of rock and in, in on the mountain. So this is what we're gonna do. You're gonna find four heads. I don't care what heads you use, any four people or animals or whatever. Um, all that really matters is that the shape of the head should fit nicely uh, along with the original head. So they don't have to be identical, uh, but they do need to fit. Um, some people always wanna do like SpongeBob, for example, and SpongeBob is horrible for this because SpongeBob doesn't have a head. He's just kind of a sponge, right? Um, so try to find heads that uh, roughly fit the correct shape. Um, so with that said, I'm gonna just, uh, I'm gonna get rid of all these layers and I'm gonna show you exactly how I did this. Um, actually, before I do that, I'm gonna save that just to make sure I have a copy. There we go. Um, and now I'm gonna delete all my layers and I'm gonna start from here. So this is where you're gonna be starting from just a blank background of Mount Rushmore. Um, so if you haven't already, just go to File, Open, and open that file that we just downloaded earlier from over here, okay? So here is my Mount Rushmore. Now, I am going to find a head to replace, let's say, uh, President Lincoln here, okay? So I'm gonna make a new tab and I'm gonna search for, um, I don't know, what's, uh, what's a good name in the news this week? How about, uh, how about, uh, How about if I just do 
face. I'm just going to search for a face. Um, you can literally choose any face that you want that roughly fits the shape and size where we need to put it. There are some very interesting faces here. Um, <laughs> how about it? There's all kinds of interesting stuff. How about this one? We're going to use this one. We're going to use the Zuck. And I think the Zuck <laughs> is uh, actually quite a good fit here for, uh, for Abe Lincoln. So we're going to replace Abe Lincoln with the Zuck. Um, so I'm going to use this one. Uh, to get this picture into this tab, all I have to do is click with two fingers on the face or on the picture and say copy image copy image okay when I come back to Photopia I'm gonna go edit paste okay so there is my new picture now obviously it's in the wrong place obviously it's the wrong size and obviously it has the background behind it so what am I gonna do um, on my tools over here at the very top is the move tool this one right here this arrow is the move tool okay um, this will allow me to move whatever layer I currently have selected. So if I'm on the background, it'll move the background. If I'm on my Zuckerberg layer, it will move Zuckerberg. Now, it is possible that the picture that you pasted in uh, could be either way too big, like this, where you paste it in and it fills up the entire picture, um, or it could be way too small. There's no way of knowing until after you paste it in. Um, actually, there is a way of knowing. When you look at the picture, right here, it'll show you the size of it. That'll give you some indication of how big it's gonna be when you paste it in. Um, but there's mine, okay? So let's say I, I paste it in my Zuckerberg, and there he is. I need to shrink it down, okay? So to resize your picture, the way that you do it, uh, you use your Move tool, which is up here at the top, okay? It's this arrow. Um, and then right up here at the top in my uh, option bar, there's a checkbox that says transform controls. I'm gonna turn that on. When I turn that on, I will get a box that I can grab and shrink my picture, okay? Um, if your picture is a, a reasonable size, you're gonna see all four corners of it and you can grab any of those corners to resize your picture, okay? Uh, if your picture is humongous, like that, you might not see the sides of it. You might not actually see those handles. Uh, if that's the case, all you have to do is zoom out, okay? If you zoom out, make your picture smaller, then you should be able to see those corners, okay? To zoom out, you can press Control minus on your keyboard. You can use the zoom tool down here at the bottom to zoom in uh, or hold Alt to zoom out, okay? Uh, you can also pinch to zoom <laughs> just like you would with a, a phone or a tablet, um, just like that. Uh, so here is my layer. I'm gonna shrink him down. Uh, now, when you are resizing things in Photoshop, uh, particularly faces, it is very important that you don't squish or distort the face. So you don't want the face to look like that or like that. Okay, um, we people, we humans, <laughs> unlike certain people, uh, we humans tend to be very well attuned to facial proportions. So if you try to resize it and you squish it a little bit so that the face is too wide or too tall or whatever, it, it's very obvious immediately, okay? Um, and it's not really a good thing. So. When you resize something in Photoshop, always, always grab the corner, like so, and hold the shift key. So as you resize, if you hold the shift key while you're resizing, uh, you'll notice it keeps the shape the same. It will not distort it. It will not um, make the face look strange in any way. So hold that shift key as you're resizing it, and you'll make sure that your head is a nice, correct proportion, okay? Um, so here is my Zuckerberg layer. All right, I'm gonna zoom in on uh, Zuckerberg here a little bit. I need to get rid of this background, okay? So I've got my picture, it looks okay, the size is about right, uh, but I've got all this background around it. Uh, 
So I wanna get rid of the background. Um, by the way, if you're confused at any point already, just rewind the video, go back, make sure you can get to this point where you have a layer like this with your picture on it, okay? All I did was paste it in there. If you're confused, go back, rewatch that part. Um, moving and resizing, use your move tool and your transform controls up here at the top to make sure that you can resize accurately, okay? So there is my head that I'm gonna cut out. Um, the easiest way to cut this out, but the wrong way, is to use the eraser. Uh, now, I say easiest, but it's not really easiest. It's actually the worst way. Um, using the eraser, I can erase something. Uh, so I could erase this entire background. Uh, the problem with using the eraser is that it is permanent, okay? Once you do it, uh, there's no going back. Now, before you say it, I know. Yes, I can push Control Z and undo it. Um, but once I've saved it or once I do too many steps, then you can't go back and unerase something. Once it's erased, it's erased forever. So we don't use the eraser. Uh, what we use is a tool called a layer mask um, or what Photopia calls it, a raster mask. So a mask is very, very simple in concept, but could be a little bit tricky. Uh, so if you get stuck, again, pause the video, rewind the video, whatever you need to do until you get the idea. So over here on my layers, down here at the bottom of my layers is this button right here that looks like a, um, looks like a, a white or a gray rectangle with a dark gray circle in the middle. Okay. Um, in other words, when I zoom in on it, I don't know if you actually, yeah, you do see it. Um, this is the button for adding a layer mask, this guy right here. Okay. When I click that, notice I have my Zuck layer selected. Uh, when I click that, it adds a mask. This is a mask. So on my layer, it now has this little white square next to it or white rectangle next to it. Uh, the white of the mask means that my entire layer is visible, okay? If I come over here and grab my brush tool, okay? I'm now using my brush tool. And if I paint using black, look what happens. So I'm now using black and I'm painting and my layer is disappearing, okay? So if I look over here at my mask, you'll see, indeed, my layer now has this black stripe on it and it has disappeared that section of my drawing or my photo, okay? If I switch back to white, I can switch by clicking this little arrow right here, this little guy, okay? If I swap my colors, anything that I paint white comes back, okay? So on a mask, essentially, anything that is black is invisible. So I'm gonna black out the entire background, including his shoulders, like so. Okay, so all the areas that I painted black are gone. You can't see them. All the areas that are white are still visible. Uh, to get in these little areas in here, I'm gonna use a smaller brush. So I'm making my brush smaller. Um, in case you don't remember, remember you can always press the bracket key. So the key that looks like this and like this. Those are your bracket keys. They are, I'm gonna pause for a second. Okay, sorry for the interruption. Um, yeah, we're recording. Um, so these are your bracket keys. Those bracket keys are for uh, changing your brush size. So you can make your brush bigger and smaller very quickly um, simply by using the uh, those bracket keys, okay? Um, so when I am painting my mask, I'm gonna wanna zoom in pretty close uh, and I'm gonna wanna use a pretty small brush so that I am uh, going right up next to the edge. Um, if I wanna be really precise, I can get really close. But that is the stuff of nightmares, but you know, whatever. Um, so I can use a really small brush and very carefully get all the way around the edge, like so. Okay, um, if I make a mistake, let me just fix that area. If I make a mistake, let's say uh, uh, I didn't realize that this man has hair because his hair uh, looks kind of silly. 
Let me tell you a funny story about Mark Zuckerberg's hair. Uh, he uh, has a big thing for ancient Roman history. Um, and so he has the silly haircut because he wants to look like uh, Augustus Caesar, one of the rulers of Rome. True story. Weird, I know, but it's true. Um, so uh, I, I, I cut the haircut off. Um, I chopped the top of his head off there. I'm going to come back to it in a second. So I'm just working my way all the way around, taking away all the background. Okay, so I realize I've made a mistake. Uh, number one, I sort of have the edge of his ear here sort of cut off a little bit, and I messed up the top of his head. Okay, so to go back, uh, all I have to do is switch to white so I can hit the little swap colors button. I can also press X on my keyboard. X will swap my colors. So now I'm drawing with white, okay? So if I'm drawing with white, it brings stuff back to the picture. And if I swap back to black, it's now removing stuff from the picture, okay? So this is what I'm going for. I'm going for um, a nice, crisp edge. Uh, it doesn't need to have every hair, you know, perfectly drawn around it, um, but close enough. Uh, this over here looks a little bit goofy, so I'm going to fix up that and that. Missed a spot right there. Uh, use white to bring his ear back here a little bit. There you go. Okay, so now I have my Zuck all cut out. Okay. Zoom in here. Okay. So there you go. Once you have your heads cut out, and you are going to do four heads, not four heads, but four different heads, okay? Once you have your four different heads in position, um, then uh, that's a good place to stop. And we'll continue uh, next week uh, neck with a new lesson on the next step of the process. So here is my Zuckerberg head. Uh, I'm going to put it right where Abe Lincoln is. Now, you'll notice it's not quite the right size. I might want to make him just a little bit smaller. So, again, as long as I have my transform tools uh, selected up here, I can uh, shrink him down a little bit. Again, make sure you hold the shift key so you get the size correct. Um, I also notice it's not quite the right direction. I kind of want to rotate it a little bit. If I just take my my pointer and just put it outside of the box, it turns to that kind of an arrow, and then I can rotate it a little bit. So I want to put that head right there. Okay, I'm going to come back here and alter my mask just a little bit more. A um, couple of things to, to keep your eye on. Uh, number one, be aware of what part of your picture you're editing. Okay, if I click on this guy right here, I'm actually editing the actual layer. What that means is if I draw, I'm actually drawing black, okay? I don't want to do that. Um, if I'm on the mask, and you can clearly see which one is selected. By looking closely, you can see it has a little uh, highlighted box around it. So if I'm on my mask, when I draw black, it's essentially like erasing, all right? So I want to fix the bottom down here. His neck looks weird. Um, I want to have the rock kind of go around his neck like so. So I have the edge of the rock right here, uh, which I'm gonna draw in by drawing black, okay? Uh, and then switch back to white so that I am having just the part of him showing that makes sense, that you would see behind the edge of the rock like so, okay? So there you have it. So there is Lincoln. And there is the Zuck, okay? Um, now, when you're finished, what are you gonna have to show for this? You're gonna have something that looks like, let me open, downloads. By the way, uh, once you've completed a head, you're gonna wanna save. So go up to file and say, save as PSD, okay? Save as PSD. Um, when you turn this in eventually, 
Uh, do not make a screenshot. Don't send me a screenshot. Don't share it with me. Just click Save as PSD, and that PSD file will be in your download folder. That is what you submit on Classroom, okay? So make sure you click Save as PSD. Before I change tabs, before I switch windows or anything, I'm always gonna save, just to make sure I don't lose anything um, and I'm not wasting my time, okay? Um, so save as PSD. Um, but for me, personally, I'm just gonna open, because what I'm looking for is this one. <clears throat> this one. So here is my finished, if you will, um, Mount Rushmore. I'm going to turn off all my adjustments here. So this is what you should have uh, at the end of this week, which is a Mount Rushmore with four nicely cut out, properly sized heads. Okay. Don't worry about the colors. Don't worry about the, um, the textures. Don't worry about any of that. This is what you're going to submit on um, Classroom. So go ahead and find yourself four heads. Uh, they should fit nicely. Copy and paste them, resize, and use the layer mask tool to make sure that they fit and look perfect. Uh, once you're done, save as PSD and submit on our Classroom. If any of this was confusing, please just rewind to the appropriate place and watch that part again. A lot of people are sending me emails like, I don't understand what to do, but they're not telling me what they don't understand, or they're saying, it's not working. Don't send me an email that says, it's not working, okay? If you have a specific question, please email me. If you can't figure out any of it, send me an email and we will schedule a live Zoom meeting time so that we can meet one-on-one, -on -one, face to digital face, right? Uh, to make sure that you know exactly what to do, okay? Um, have a great week. Work on this. Uh, get this part finished this week by the end of the week so that for next week, I can show you the next step, which is adding textures and colors like so. Okay. Good job. Thank you.